Could lossy digital audio be better than lossless? If you ask an audiophile why you can't hear the difference between $10 interconnects and $1,000 interconnects, he or she will say, because the rest of your system is insufficiently resolving. <laughs> resolving is an interesting word here. Resolution is something you'd say about a camera lens, and you'd measure it in line pairs per millimetre. I don't have to go into lenses further, other than to say that the resolution of a lens can be measured. Can we say the same about a hi-fi system or any audio system or device? Well, we can, of course, measure frequency response, distortion and noise. That, in theory, should tell us all about the resolution of a device or system. But that's not enough for audiophiles. They can hear things that measuring instruments can't. OK, I've just split my audience. Audiophiles are nodding their heads in agreement. Skeptics are reaching for their blood pressure monitors. <laughs> but for both halves of my audience, I think I have something useful and interesting to present here. And it's all about resolution. So, going back to the title of this video, I'm talking about lossless audio and lossy data compressed audio. So what is lossless audio? In a nutshell, the original analog waveform picked up by the microphones is converted into a pulse code modulated data stream. All of the original analog audio is converted and the only losses are frequencies higher than half the sampling rate and levels lower than the least significant bit of the data. This is the original data and your lossless streaming service, if that's what you subscribe to, will send this to you without any alteration. Lossless. But suppose you listen to this audio via lossy data compression, such as MP3, AAC, or one of the other similar codecs. Codec equals coder decoder. These work on psychoacoustic principles and throw away all of the data the codec thinks that you can't hear, leaving behind only the data that's relevant to the human hearing system. I say hearing system here because it's the ears and the brain that are involved, not just the ears. So typically, the amount of data that's retained by MP3 or AAC encoding is around 10% of the original. 90% is thrown in the trash. 90%. This is phenomenal. At least, that's what I thought when I first heard of this concept, sometime back in the 1990s. I still think it now. I can listen to 10% of the original data via AAC and still enjoy music perfectly. Well, almost perfectly, but it's mostly good enough and I care very little about what I'm missing. You've heard all of this before, haven't you? Don't I have something new to say? Yes, I do. And I think audiophiles will like it. Resolution. That audiophile criticising that your system is insufficiently resolving it's all about what you can hear and what your brain can process. The success of lossy data compression tells us that most people can't hear or don't care about the 90% of the data that's missing, just the 10% that they can hear and process. If they upgrade to lossless streaming and get that 90% back, most people won't hear the difference because that 90% is what we can't hear. What's the point? Well, my point is, why don't we concentrate on what we can hear? Forget about what we can't hear and focus on what we can. Suppose we go back to the original analog to digital conversion. We can regard the original analog signal from the microphones as perfect because we can't get any better than that. Any conversion to digital is going to be less than perfect, no matter how many bits or how many kilohertz we use. So why are we wasting processing power on stuff we can't hear? Why not use our 24 bits, 44.1 kHz sampling, or 96 kHz sampling for preference, on what we can hear, and not waste most of it, 90% of it, on what we can't? This is so important, I'm going to say it again. Lossy data compression has shown us that of the audio we hear, we don't notice 90% of it. Our ears and brains can only appreciate 10%. So why don't we focus all of our science and technology on capturing that 10% with the highest resolution possible? I would imagine that this is going to be technically challenging. It can't be done by digital processing after the original conversion because the detail we're looking for is already lost. So it has to be part of the analog to digital conversion itself. 
The analog audio going into the converter is analysed and only the part we can hear and appreciate is converted. And to that part is dedicated the whole of 24 bits and the whole of 44.1, 48 or 96 kHz sampling rate. Can this be done? I don't know. Will it work? I don't think it's possible to know until it is done. But we have an interesting question here. Can lossy audio be better than lossless? I think, possibly, it can. Let us all know what you think in the comments. See you soon. Betty, you're the technical assistant around here. Where does he get that figure of 10% from? Well, Debbie, editorial assistant, if you take a 24-bit 48 kilohertz stereo recording, you get 24 times 48,000 times two channels, which is 2,304,000 bits per second. Divide that into 256,000 bits per second, which is good quality AAC, and you get 0.11 or 11%. Thank you, Betty. Clearly, he rounded it to 10. He didn't give us any jokes this time. Good job. He's not all that funny.